So I'm feeling like we might just go ahead and get started. That's okay with everybody. It's our first um, leadership live event. So good morning, volunteers. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're we're still not quite sure exactly what the the format of this should be could be so appreciate feedback um but we did hear that you know people were wanting some different kinds of um uh, communications i guess uh, we wanted to help build relationships and and help people become a little bit more familiar with the leadership of the program and have the opportunity to ask questions and and learn more and and um, I'm Jean Reed. I'm the director, and I'm uh, one of the hosts today, along with I'll let them introduce themselves. Our assistant director. I'm Jolna Klaus. I'm the assistant director here, and I will also be helping Jean and Grant host. And I'm the last one. I'm Grant. So I'm a fourth year biochemistry student. Um, currently applying to medical schools, but I've been volunteering with the the program here for the last last three years, I guess. So since I was a freshman um, and I've worked with a variety of different units and then the student leadership board and now I'm chairing the program. So yeah, really happy you guys are all here. Yeah, so I think when when Jolna and Grant and I were kind of chatting about, um, you know, we asked for some questions and feedback. We didn't hear a lot from folks, so we were thinking, well, let's let's come up with some topics that maybe you guys might not have heard about um, or or heard much about um, in in other um, communications that we've had. And I think you, you know maybe everybody is familiar with our our, our mission, right? So volunteer services provides human resources and financial resources to improve the patient and family experience at our hospital. And I think our volunteers all realize that you guys are the human resources out there um, improving that experience. Um, and, and maybe not knowing as much about the financial resources. So if you volunteer in one of our retail businesses, um, uh, especially the, the gift shop, right, is our main revenue driver. But we do have, we have the Rooftop Cafe, we have the Fourth Floor Salon, um, we have the Kaleidoscope Gift Shop and, and Wild Rose Gifts. And, and our, our charge really is to create a, a, a margin that, uh, that funds uh, patient and family programs across the house. And uh, I think Jilna was going to talk a little bit about that process. It's kind of going on right now. And if there are questions about um, the funding and, and how that looks, um, I, we, we've got the chat going. So I think we were hoping that we this might not be just a kind of a one on one kind of question. We may end up put, putting this on um, our website as a video for folks to watch. Um, so hoping for maybe some bigger picture kinds of inquiries. If anything like that comes up, please let us know. But Jelna, why don't you take it away? Thanks, Jean. So as Jean mentioned, we do have our funding cycle is going on right now. So September 15th through November 1st um, on our where does the volunteer services money go? We have an application that um, staff is able to complete. Um, there's a lot of information that's required, but so Jean mentioned we have the four businesses. So all the proceeds from those businesses help fund these different programs and projects um, hospital wide. So just to give an idea of how much we funded in the past. I mean, just last year, we did over 300,000. And that's pretty typical from year to year. Um, I wanted to point out just a couple that our volunteers may have seen in action um, while they're volunteering on different units. Uh, a lot of the focus last year was on pain intervention kits. So helping both adult patients and pediatric patients when they're getting vaccinations or blood draws, things like that. Um, we had quite a few requests from the different clinics and inpatient units for fidget toys and um, what they called buzzies to distract them from the pain in their arm and things like that. So that's made a great impact um, on our patients and, and their families when they're with them. The kiddos, you know, they, they don't realize what's going on because they're distracted and the volunteers help with distributing those toys and distracting the patient while they're here. So those, I think, have made a huge impact. Um, but as a volunteer, you know, when you're on the unit, if you see something like, you know, I think this would be a great program or project that might help these patients on this unit, feel free to talk to your staff, volunteer supervisors. Um, all the information is on our website that's 
publicly accessible. So um, anybody can take a look at what we've funded in the past. And then uh, when the, after those applications are in, we have our contributions and donations committee that then reviews all of the applications that go through. Um, and then the ones that are, are accepted and approved go through our advisory board. And then we help distribute funding. We um, put recognition on the items and we really hope to get those get pictures of those items in action. So um, we're able to share that with the rest of the staff and the volunteers through our various ways of communication, the emails, the loop, the new news, things like that. So Jill is the staff member who really works directly with a lot of that process, right? So she's the one that has kind of created the, um, the form, the online form. We've transitioned to a little bit different process in the last few years, um, which I think has made it easier for the applicants and for uh, our, our review team. Um, but we appreciate all of that support. So any questions um, about the program? And again, checking out the website, um, I, we encourage you to go there and, and review how many years of funds are posted there, Jelma. There are at least five years, if not almost 10. So I'll drop that link in the chat here in just a second for you guys. So anything uh, else you wanna share, Jelma, or any questions um, about the funding guidelines. And as Jean mentioned, so when I started a few years ago, that all the applications were paper. So my first experience was people slipping the applications through our door since we, the deadline is the end of the day on November 1st. And then this year is the first time we're actually utilizing Qualtrics. Um, so that helps. I think it keeps things a little more organized, both for the, the person filling out the application, but also for our committee to review it. It puts the information all in one place. Um, you can review it electronically or we can print it out pretty easily for them. It's a little different process, but um, if anybody goes through the process and has, has suggestions, we're always looking for ways to improve. And thanks also to our advisory board. So the Volunteer Services Advisory Board, we have uh, eight volunteers. Um, and then three additional volunteers who are in the leadership role, the executive committee, which is the chair, the chair elect and the past chair. Um, and that executive committee, those three folks really do the heavy lifting for us. They're the ones that read, I mean, it's literally hundreds of pages um, and, and meet and talk through those requests um, and, and forward their recommendations to the full advisory board for approval. So thanks leadership team. And thank you, Jill. Appreciate covering that. Uh, let's see, Grant, you were going to talk about an awesome new pilot that um, we're partnering with um, a, a new area uh, on a newer activity for volunteers. And not only is, you know, Grant overseeing the student program, but he's also volunteering. So has super insider info. I do. A little info, I guess. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I think as a volunteer program and hospital wide, we're always, you know, trying to adapt and improve how we do things. Um, I think particularly like with the pandemic, we've seen that where we're trying to adapt and, um, you know, improve the way that we, we deal with patients and we care for our patients. And one of the new initiatives that we actually have just started this last month has been um, a new hand hygiene quality improvement position. And that's working with hospital epidemiology to track hand hygiene adherence throughout the hospital. Um, so in all the different units of the hospital, it's really critical to track how, you know, staff, volunteers, really everyone is um, following hand hygiene protocols because those, those simple hand hygiene acts that we do on a daily basis are a really easy way to prevent hospital acquired infections. Um, and it's it's one of the background ways that is really important to ensure that patients are cared for safely. Um, so we started that in September and it's working with Donya Menon and Dr. Kobayashi in uh, hospital epidemiology. And so far we've had, I wanna say around 15 volunteers and we're still getting some new volunteers going. and. We've been able to, you know, record hundreds of observations every week with that. So really just 
looking to looking to see how things are going on a daily basis with hand hygiene throughout the hospital and kind of that background role that volunteers can serve to to help us better take care of our patients. Um, I started volunteering in the hand hygiene quality improvement area. Um, I don't have much experience, but it's been really interesting so far. Um, it's a great opportunity to just kind of learn about the different hospital units as well. Um, you're really tested to see how, if you know where all the units are and what, what different units do and all the staff that, that go into providing care in those units. Um, so it's been a really great experience so far and hopefully we can turn that pilot program into you know, a longstanding part of our program uh, going forward. Let's see. Oh, Christian's also a hand hygiene observer. There are so many things that I love about this pilot. So um, first of all, I think some, some really direct physician involvement, right? So um, I, I was in the office yesterday and, and Taka was in with a new volunteer going out for the first time. I love that they are doing, um, was it Johns Hopkins, a, a, a video training that you did before you went and got started? And that's just kind of an interesting um, way for, for our students to learn. I, I feel like it's just really a best practice as far as, well, in fact, Jill and I were at a state conference, right, recently, and we had, there was a joint commission, um, a previous surveyor, now a consultant who was, was talking to us um, and mentioned that he felt really volunteers were underutilized in safety initiatives um, and, and that some of the best things that he was seeing out there um, involve volunteers and, and their eyes because they're everywhere, right? They're all across the hospital. And, and oftentimes they see things that those of us who are here day in and day out don't, don't notice maybe. They have the opportunity, I think, to contribute to safety in, in a way that um, we, we haven't always um, thought of uh, for volunteers. So uh, just a lot of really good um, patient focused uh, outcomes, I guess, that we can impact. But I also love the flexibility, right? So we've had secret shoppers doing hand hygiene observations. We've had paid students uh, in the past, paid folks who have been, I mean, it's that accountability has always been part of our hand hygiene um, program. Um, but the way that they use volunteers in a really flexible way, right? So any volunteer who's already got a shift, if they have an extra hour or, um, uh, or two a week can participate. I, I like that a lot. It's getting, for some of you, like Christian, maybe a, a, a couple more hours that you can serve in a flexible way and also giving you that exposure that Grant was talking about. Just a bunch of wins. Anything else you wanna to touch base on? I don't think so. Does anyone else have any questions about, you know, the hand hygiene position or um, or anything else? So the last thing then, I guess, that we had talked about maybe reviewing today uh, is closing on a little bit of a feel good um, event that was hosted here at the hospital. Um, earlier this week, uh, we, we had a blessing of the animals for the furry friends. Um, we've had a pilot uh, recently with the COPE team. Um, uh, we, we have dog handler teams that have been visiting here. We've had a, a furry friends program for a couple decades now. Um, but during COVID, right, uh, the dog handler teams weren't able to come on site and visit. And after a while, the dog handler teams were able to pivot to do um, uh, staff support. So rather than going into patient rooms, um, the dog handler teams were coming on site and, and doing um, staff therapy events, and those were super well received. Uh, and then more recently, um, the COPE team um, has expanded. Uh, we have uh, uh, three, three full-time staff members supporting COPE response. Um, so Karen, Matt, and Laurel, um, had been also offering a, a pilot with uh, a, a couple of the dog handler teams um, offering um, dog therapy in COPE responses. 
and I think that was kind of the initiative maybe for this um, new uh, um, event. We hope it's going to be annual now. It was a lot of fun. We had six or seven different dog handler teams that came into um, the hospital this week. It was Tuesday, I guess. Is that right, Jilna? Yeah. Um, so historically, that is um, the uh, it's World Animal Day, I guess, but it started out, I think, um, St. Francis um and and a, a catholic tradition it kind of has spread and now it's it's more of a secular uh piece and i'm gonna see if i can share my screen and bring some of these pictures up um let's see can you see that that's Miss Annie. Oh, uh, let's see. There's there's Carol and Sam in his Iowa flair. And that's me with Skeeter <laughs> and Joy with Milo. And this is up in the meditation room on the 12th floor of the Stead Family Children's Hospital. And there's Carla with her dog cat, Catalina, <laughs> cat for short. Uh, there's Mike and Cody, and there's Peggy with Andy, and there is Rebecca with Ruthie. Great pictures. There's Skeeter waiting for her blessing, and there's just a shot of um, Matt, Matt and Karen there doing the blessing with Ruthie. So that's our feel-good closer today. Hopefully you're going to see a little bit more about that maybe in um, marketing coming up. What do you think, Jilna? I sure hope so. I think um, we work a lot with marketing to to help create feel good stories and things that our staff and volunteers would like to read. So I'm working with them to create a little in the spotlight article and it should be hopefully posted soon. That's awesome. Our Thanks favorite for volunteer. <laughs> what was that Grant? Our favorite volunteers. <laughs> animals the four-legged volunteers are pretty popular yeah and we always need more dog handler teams in that program so we're also hoping that some of this coverage might help us to recruit some additional teams if anybody's got questions um, about how you could become a dog handler um, if you've got a dog that you think might be a good match happy to talk about that there's good stuff on our website too so well i think that's all we had for you today Thanks for joining us. Any other questions? I think Don had a question, um, but more about safety and security. I don't know. I don't actually have the answer to your question, Don. We may have to look into it a little more, but um, for reference, it's can volunteers or staff members let patients or visitors in a door that is a staff only entrance if they already have a sticker for that day? So I am not sure if I have the answer to that question. I'm not sure either. You know what, my my default response is I would defer to safety. And in general, we when we enter a staff door, it is only ourselves that we should let through. We shouldn't be vetting other folks um, entering. So it's not necessarily that I think it that's going to be a, a policy that you you is is being broken at all. But I just think when I think about guidelines and safety, I would I would defer um uh, on the safety side and and in general those those special doors are made there as a convenience for those of us with a badge that access them and I, if you do come across someone you know a visitor that's trying to get back in if you have time and you know where the, the closest entrance is i would recommend just going and walking them over and making sure that they can get back in i love that answer too really good okay Leadership Live, take one. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Enjoy Thank you. the rest of your Friday, your weekend. Maybe we'll see you again next month. Thank you.